So Jordan, uh, incorporating a lot of new pieces with you know transfers in the back end and even Spear with old guys, you, you have to sort of be patient to do that at the start of practice. How do you handle that? Oh yeah, you gotta be patient, but you, you gotta be smart um, with what you're asking them to do, how you're asking them to do it. You know, do things throughout the summer to kind of get a starting point, and then move as they move. You know, um, to figure out really what you are, and so that's kind of what we're in the process uh, of. But I mean, I'll, I've said this since <clears throat> February. I, I, you know, the pieces that are there, we really like. What do you see out of the new pieces? You know, a lot of athleticism, uh, speed, uh, a lot of <clears throat> a lot of football has been played between uh, with those guys. Uh, whether it's Wesley, Jasir, um, Rashad, a lot of you know Mike, even there, there's a lot of you know, a lot of experience in some places where we needed it. So that's probably the biggest thing. Those SCS guys you got uh, come from good programs, winning programs. Did that play any role in in bringing them in, or was it just basically this is what we need, the athleticism, all that stuff fit? No, it played a big role. Okay. That, you know that, that's. Experience is one thing. Um, what you're, what you're accustomed to, culture-wise, is one thing, and so it definitely plays in our evaluation of those guys, and that's really important. Uh, those guys are making, most of your FCS guys are making that move for a reason, and that reason, majority of the time, is is to prove uh, something in their la in the twilight of their college careers that hey, they could compete against a higher level of competition. So. When you go through that process, being a part of programs that traditionally have done what the programs those guys you mentioned are from, then yes, it does matter. I was talking to him still on the phone earlier this summer. He said from the coaches he's talked to that they view the FCS transfer as almost like gold. In some ways more valuable than the power five guys because of, you know, not having, you know, wanting to, to prove themselves and not having some, right. you know, that kind of thing. You, you see it that way, maybe? Yeah, I, I do. I mean, they, they, uh, not, not a hundred percent. Not that a lot, a lot of guys that go from um, FBS to FBS or Power Five to Power Five aren't hungry. A lot of them are, uh, but those guys tend to be very, very hungry and eager to prove, um, you know, for whatever reason, from high school or maybe it's junior college that they're at that level. Uh, there are reasons. Or there, or there are things they were told they couldn't do. Correct. So now they have the opportunity to show that they can do it. Um, you know, guys that have that that mindset, that mentality, they're they're a lot of fun to coach. Okay. Go ahead, Coach. How um, big is it to get back? You know, Dante Stills for this year and the year that he's going to have, especially with you know given all the new faces that you have on this roster. You at least know that you have a big anchor right up front there. He's, you know, Dante is one of the most talented young men, if not college football, in, in Big 12. And so anytime you can get a talent like that back, it's obviously a plus. You know, for him, the biggest the biggest growth uh, is is the awareness of what he has to do. And so, and that shows up from all season training um, to the summer, the OTAs, player workouts. Um, and up to this point through through two practices, um, that's that's the biggest thing is to see him grow. Um, that care, he's obviously a, a, a guy that young kids look up to. They know who he is. They've known who he is for a long time. Whether it's they're fans of West Virginia or they were just recruits, they knew you know guys know who he is. And um, so to see that, uh, and for him to be aware of what he the growth he had to make um, shows a lot of maturity. And so, you know, it's it's good for us, it, no doubt. But I, I think that the the bigger the bigger point, the biggest thing is what it's going to do for him and and his career. So, Jordan, how do you feel about the bandits right now? You, you know, I mean, we there, it's it's you know, Jared has shown a lot of growth in the last two days on very very simple things, um, pad level leverage, just basic football fundamentals. Um, Along, uh, you know, 
and so has Linnell, but Jared really stood out on a couple things yesterday. Um, you know, and, you know, if I look at it, just, you know, Jared is, is kind of the utility guy. We can use him in a, a lot of different places. Um, Linnell is probably more of a pass rusher. Um, Eric Burton, young player, um, I think has put on maybe 11 pounds this off season. So he, he's going to get there. He's not there yet, but he's going to get there. Um, and then we're moving, you know, a couple of pieces back and forth. Tor Simmons is a guy that gives us a little more, um, a little more size and strength over there when we need it. Um, but you know they they've shown a lot. They've had a great summer, a lot of promise, a lot of a lot of um, <clears throat> you know, not only learning the scheme but how they can use the scheme for their benefit on, on certain things, um, which is what we were always able to do uh, with a couple all conference players years ago. Um, you know the guys could once they figured it out, and I think I think both those guys are really starting to do that this summer, and so through two days, which is. You know shells. I mean, you you don't see a whole lot. So, if that carries over though into the season, how much more does that let you use the bandit the way that I don't want to say it's supposed to be, but with all the varied roles that it can have in this defense, how much more does that open that up for you to use? Well, I mean, at its base, it's three, four outside back. You know, and and you know until they. Honestly, until they master, until we, we feel good about the, guy, the the things that that position does, um, really probably won't do a whole lot with it. Uh, but I think that that what I've seen through the end of summer and in, and in the fall, I think they'll get to that point where we can do some different things. But right now, quite honestly, I'm not, you know, rush the passer, play the run, focus on your base drops, and then we'll move on from there. In that position to have somebody that's versatile. I mean, I guess if you have somebody that's a good pass rusher, it kind of tips off what you're doing. If you have a guy that's a good run support, kind of tips off. So you want to have a guy that's pretty versatile for that position, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I think if you look at three, four outside backers throughout NFL and college, you know, that's what they are. Um, I think if you put a primary role with it, it is a pass rusher, but they also have to have some savvy and some. Um, and their drops and, and know how to – when you do have them play any type of man, how you play that. They have to, they have, to have some – a little bit of just football knack about them. Um, the thing that, that a lot of times that you look for is, is that people really don't think about anymore. They always lump it in pass rushing is, is blitz, blitz ability. And so that's something um, that you look for, which most of the time is pretty simple, you know. Um, but, come you know, coming off the edge. But, you know, and these, yeah, the more versatile, the better. But there's You're also – a pretty special player. Then. Right, correct. I mean, there's, but there's also some intangibles you're going to, you know, link to something you're going to want to have there. Obviously, speed, but it's not, you know, the most important thing. And um, Obviously, and then you got to have the size and the power to do what a D lineman may have to do at times. And so, it is a versatile player. Um but you gotta you gotta have you gotta play to whatever their strengths are when when you recruit a guy. Also, you know that you can't ask him to do what somebody can't do. Jordan, along, along that line a little bit, uh, I don't think anybody would argue that the quarterback is the most important player offensively. In your defense, is there equivalently to the quarterback? Mike linebacker. The Mike linebacker. Uh, how, how so? That's your, I mean, that's your quarterback. You know, it's really. Your defense goes usually as that guy goes, and if I look, I look through just the history of the game, from you know Mike Singletary to Ray Lewis, you know they're um, that's what they are. They're 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 the physical leader, they're the emotional leader, um, and maybe I'm a little bit old school in that fact, but I just that's the way I've always seen it. Like that's your that's your quarterback. Now in our defense, the Mike and the Bandit, and usually with one of the safeties kind of always work together to communicate what's going on. So um, you have a couple of voices in there, but I mean, if you if you single out one guy that's quarterback, it's the Mike linebacker. I assume you have ways of protecting the middle linebacker, uh, keeping guys a little blockers off them. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> and I, but I hope I have a guy I don't need to protect too, you know, and I, and I hope. And I don't think Lee Coburn needs protected a whole bunch. Um, but yeah, you do. You try to do certain things to get, to keep that guy's Keep that guy clean um, as much as you can in the run game. <clears throat> to not put him in stressful situations, run and pass conflict. That's what, that's a big um, 
that's a big thing into you know with today's offenses. And so yeah, you try to protect him, but like I said, you also you know hopefully you don't have a guy that you have to that can can get in there and, and thump when he needs to. So. He has to assume that role like Lee, like Lee is doing. Mm -hmm. Does that does that make it harder, or how does he handle that? You know, it's really about the personality of whoever you bring in. You know, I think it took Lee about a day to where people were like, "Yeah, that's you know, that's probably a guy who can step in and people listen to when he talks. People listen." And that's important, you know. That's that's again, that's part of the evaluation process. You tell all those intangibles. If you're looking at that, just like you would look at a quarterback, you want a guy that's got a little something about him. Um, and you look for the same thing in the Mike linebacker. And that's and and when you find that, it's a pretty easy transition because when he opens his mouth, other people close their mouth. And that's what you. That's at least what we look for. He looks like a Big Twelve Mike linebacker. Mm-hmm. That's a good thing too. <laughs> What's his progress been like from spring through now, Lee? Uh, fundamentally, a lot better. You know, just and and that's that's typical of any junior college kid, no matter what their eligibility is, and just knowing that from the other side of thing, <clears throat> the other side of things with junior college players, the transition is it, and it really doesn't matter. I mean, obviously it's power power five, but any any time they take that next step up, um, the transition is. is right out of the gate is usually a difficult one, which is fine. It's totally natural. But the biggest transition is the, the, the little bitty fundamental things that each position has to do, offense, defense, and special teams, right? So um, that was probably the biggest struggle in the spring with him. And through the summer, uh, it's made tremendous strides with his fundamental game, his footwork, his hand placement, his pad level, just all just little bitty things. Easier or more difficult to teach or break habits for a guy that's been at a JUCO or has been in another school a couple of years versus the freshman that's coming straight out of high school that you, know, that you have to break down maybe some guys that have been elsewhere before to fix some issues they might have with technique? Yeah, I mean, I think the things, you know, you, all, you always see the things or you're trying to find the things that you can fix. Uh, an evaluation process. What I mean by that is, you know, if I, if I look at Lee's evaluation, and he's a kid that plays hard, is extremely passionate, and extremely plays fast, plays physical, right? And those are those are about three or four things. Quite honestly, it's hard to change if they don't if they don't do them, right? The rest of it, um, you know, and coachability, I guess, be the next thing. But if they are that, then it's it's pretty easy to get into. And hey, you know, your your drops. This it's pretty easy to change those habits. There's certain ones that aren't, in which we try to you just try to avoid that on the front end. Um, you know, it's hard to change a guy that won't play hard. At least that's my opinion. Um, so hopefully you don't have to break those habits just by the guy that you're you're going after. But um, obviously not the case with Lee. Um, but you know those habits just depending on how uh, how long they've been at one spot. You know, how long they've had the same coach, the level of of their program, you know, somewhat depends on uh, and, and the success of it. Because obviously when programs are successful, there's a reason they're successful. They have certain habits, right? So you may those may be a little little harder to break. And yeah, and, and quite honestly, if they work for them, you may allow some of those, to, allow them to keep them if it fits within what you're trying to do, which is totally fine. So, um, you know, the, the – the things you look at, like I said, that you that you don't want to have to break. Probably not. Probably not bringing that guy. Probably not bringing that guy in. When you've had as much turnover as you have on the defensive side of the ball, how much has it helped to have the? You said it only took about a day for people to have as a leader back there as your quarterback in the defense. How how impactful is that? I know you're only two days in. Right. Well, when you find guy, you know the the word that sticks out when I think about Lee is his mentality. And when you have guys like that, turnover is, is fine, quite honestly, because that's going to be an easy transition. Because his mentality is how he plays the game and that he's, he, that he's eager to learn 
everything that Coach Kuntz says, that I say, you know, whoever it is, special teams, Coach Wright, anybody, doesn't matter. Um, he's eager. And so if you turn over a guy every two years, if they have the mentality he has, then it's, it's probably, you know, it's a, lot, it, it's a lot easier. So, you know, and, and then, uh, again, turnover, that's it's a part of college ball now. So it's just something you have to deal with. Um, and go back to the evaluation of, of the same guys w with the transfer. When you need to go that route, what exactly are you looking for? And, and the guys that we brought in or we feel are exactly that. So that turnover becomes a little bit easier because of what you know, you're, what, specifically what you know you're trying to go get, whether, you know, portal or junior college wise. So if you don't, you know, if you just go at it blind, well, then it's probably a little harder. You mentioned OTAs, really helpful um, to where you are right now. How did you take advantage of it, and how much further are you now than you would have been, say, last year without them? You know, it's really good just for your, your base installation and what you're trying to do, the foundations of your defense, um, you know, from the call down to the alignment to the key to the technique and all those little things you're trying to teach. And... It, do, it gets you ahead as far as the language that you're speaking in every single drill. But you really don't, quite honestly, or we don't, go beyond that because it may be one of these days they put us in flags and yeah. that's how, well, tomorrow, then every, you know, you're, you're still at square one when, you know, when you're able to get pads on and play football. So lining up and that part of Correct. it. Correct. That helps. You. That's right. So you, you get, were able to hit the ground running. In that's that right. And, and you know, a lot of times, though, if you hit the ground running, especially with what with the turnover he's talking about, if you run too far, then you got to come back. Yeah. You know, and so that's what we tried to do with our guys is, hey, stay within what we think we need to be. Let's get really good at that, and then we'll move on to the next thing when we need to move on to the next thing. And so I think that that, that approach really – has been good for this group. This group, you, yes. collectively, are they digesting? Are they processing the things they need to through two days? You really haven't done much, but other than, is this a group that you think that's that you're like? Yeah, I you know I think so. Yeah. You know, I very rarely or or a coach or myself talking to the group where everybody's not right there, and that's a that's a big thing. You know, they listen. They're eager to learn. Um, you know, they're hungry. And does that, you know, equate to being, to being great or wins? I, I, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but I know that, that this group is, this group's fun to coach. Yeah, every defensive coach I ever talked to, it's, it's not what I know, it's what my guys know. Sure. Yeah, so. And I'm not going to play a snap. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God, because it wouldn't look very good. Yeah, I mean, you, you can um, – any information, you know, that like a, like a new kid we give them is just that. You, you can't substitute for experience. So, it go, goes back to him asking about the habits. Like, that, that's fine, especially at this level. You may change a few of them, but you just – you cannot uh, mimic that the experience they have. Whether it's FCS, FBS, Group of Five, Power Five, it don't matter. They have college football experience, and so you you hope they do. You hope they lean on that because the same, maybe the same kid, same height, same weight, same speed at a high school level, he does not have that to lean on. Everything's moving extremely fast to him. Everybody is his talent level, his speed, his strength, everything. Now that doesn't mean he's not going to be a good player. He just his learning curve is a little sharper than the guy with experience. So. Yeah, they, they, they'll lean on that, and that's fine. Jordan, some of the, like, the freshmen you have coming on the defensive side of the ball were pretty celebrated recruits, but I mean, they could play it the most years because it puts such an emphasis on immediate help in a few positions. Um, I, I just wonder how different the game is at this time of year, coaching and trying to keep eyes on new people who have limited eligibility, and you got them for a reason, versus players who are talented, but maybe it's later rather than sooner. And then, oh, by the way, there's a transfer portal out there, and who knows how kids react. There's a whole lot of plates spinning there. 
Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's really it's exactly compare your question to what he just what he just asked is um, the experience side of things. Like you know, those guys are going to lean, especially guys that are that are here for a reason and probably here for you know six months to a year. Um, yeah, they're going to lean on that experience, and 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 that's fine. Um, to where the, the the kid coming out of high school. Um, you know, we try to do some things where we make sure that we maximize the reps that we're trying to get and so that the evaluation is exactly the same. Uh, and I think the majority of high school kids that, that come in and maybe aren't ready in game one, if they see exactly why and, that, and, and you explain to them the why, then they're more likely to understand it rather than just, hey, you know, you got two reps, you're not ready. And we're not going to do that. You know, we have it set up to where, like I said, the reps and the valuation, the numbers are the same. And, you know, I mean, that's – again, that's part of college football now. You have to plan for it. You got to deal with it. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, the worst thing that, in my opinion, I think you can do for a young man is if when he's not ready is put him out there and now his confidence is – not what it needs to be. When if he knows on the front end where he stands and he's got the reps and the video that you've showed him and proved to that, then he then he probably understands it. And, and and every kid wants to play. Like I understand. Like I get that. You know. But if they understand when they're ready, uh, when they are, and when they're not, then probably more likely to uh, to for that guy to hang around. Thanks, coach. Thanks, guys.